Welcome to Chapter 2, Lesson 1, Integers and Absolute Values. In today's topics, our objectives will be compare and order integers and to find the absolute value of an expression. Before we begin, we do have some vocabulary to go over. The first one is negative number, a number less than zero. This number line represents all the numbers less than zero. So everything to the left of the zero going to infinity is a negative number. Our next key term is integers, described as negative numbers, zeros, and positive numbers. Basically, they're whole numbers, whole numbers that are both positive and negative. Example would be negative one, negative two, 0, 7, 110. The next key term is coordinate, the number that corresponds to a point. So you'll see something like this, a point. But we'll have this point put on a number line. In this case, you see the number line, and the point corresponds to the number, which is 1. Our next key term is inequality. Inequality can be found with these symbols, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and most of the time forgotten, but still in inequality, not equal to. We use these symbols to compare numbers or quantities. Here comes our key concept. The concept is absolute value. The absolute value of a number is the distance the number is from zero on the number line. The absolute value of a number is always greater than or equal to zero. Our examples are the absolute value of five. Five, its distance away from zero is five, so it is equal to five. Our second one is the absolute value of negative five is equal to five because the distance away from zero, that negative five is, is five spaces. This concept can be hard, but just remember that distance is always positive. And that's what you should remember. Uh, absolute value is based on the distance a number is from zero. Also remember that this is the sign. It's not 11. It is two bars. Some students do have difficulty recognizing this, so be very careful. Let's go to our first problem. Write an integer for each situation. In A, 500 feet below sea level. Below indicates that it is a negative number, and we just go ahead and write 500 feet. So with a negative in front of it, we know that it's below sea level. Our next slide still has the same directions. Write an integer for each situation. In B, we have a temperature increase of 12 degrees. An increase, just like in any word problem, means to add, but in this case we're going to treat it as a positive. So we have a positive 12 degrees, or most of the time we don't write the positive, we just leave it 12 degrees. They both mean the same thing. In problem C, we have a loss of $240. A loss is subtraction in translating, but in integers we're going to use that as a negative, and that's two hundred and forty dollars. The negative sign in front says to us that we've lost two hundred and forty dollars. In this slide it says use the integers grafted on the number line below. So you see the number line. We have zero in the middle. To the left we have all the negative numbers all the way up to negative six. And to the right we have all the positive numbers all the way to six. We do have some blue dots. These blue dots are coordinates and they deal with the numbers negative 5, negative 3, negative 1, and 4. Using this number line, we're going to problem A. Write two inequalities involving negative 3 and 4. So using the number line and 3 and 4, we're going to use the inequality signs. Greater than or less than. This is where we're going to compare negative 3 and 4. We notice that negative 3 is on the left side of 0 and 4 is on the right side. All numbers to the left of the 0 are negative and negative numbers 
in nature are less than 4. The second part asks us to do another comparison. The best way to do that is to switch the order of the numbers. Now we have 4 and negative 3. Once again, we know that 4 is positive, and positive numbers are always greater than negative numbers. All right, on this slide, we're going to use the same number line, but we're going to solve problem B. Replace the gray circle with less than or greater than when comparing negative 5 and negative 1 to make the sentence true. Negative numbers being opposite of positive, we must think a little bit differently. Instead of thinking which one's furthest away from 0, we need to find out which numbers are closest to 0. So we have negative 5 and negative 1. Looking at the number, one, number line, I notice that negative 1 is much closer to 0 than negative 5. With that said, I now know that negative 5 is less than negative 1. In our next slide, we're talking about golf. We're going to talk about the top 10 fourth round scores of the 2003 LPGA Championship Tournament. These scores were 0, negative 1, 4, negative 2, 1, negative 4, 2, 3, 5, and negative 3. We're asked to order these scores from least to greatest. Uh, the numbers aren't, aren't in order for us, so we're going to use a number line because it's going to be easier. Uh, we start with 0 in the middle, and to the right we go all the way to 5, and we're going to use the arrow. The arrow, of course, tells everyone here that it goes on to infinity. We don't need to go any further than 5 because I see my largest number is 5. And to keep things even or symmetrical, uh, we go to negative 5 on the left side. Now we're going to use coordinates, or dots, to represent the numbers that uh, we need to order from least to greatest. Negative 4 is the least. It's the furthest away from 0. That's the first one. And then you can see negative 3, negative 2, then negative 1. So we placed all the negative numbers. 0 was a score, so we'll put a coordinate there. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are also. So using the number line, it helps us greatly to put our numbers from least to greatest. That's one way of doing it. All right, in this slide, it asks us to evaluate each expression. All right, in this case, we need to evaluate the absolute value of negative 8. So we're going to ask a couple of questions. The first question you should ask when solving absolute values is, what is the distance of the number inside the bars from 0? I notice that it's negative 8. And so the answer is 8. It's a distance of 8. Distance is always positive. So we're, we're not going to have a negative number. We're going to have a positive. So the answer is 8. Notice that when I evaluate A, the absolute value of negative 8, I ask the question, what is the distance from 0? I realize that negative 8 is 8 spaces from 0. Distance is always positive. And we drop the absolute value bars. So the answer is, ladies and gentlemen, 8. Let's evaluate another expression. B. Problem B says the absolute value of 9 plus the absolute value of negative 7. I'm going to do these individually. The absolute value of 9. What is the distance? 9 is from 0. It is 9 spaces and it's positive. Once I evaluate that, the bars disappear. The plus sign, plus sign stays because it's outside the absolute value. Now I'll go to our next number. It's the absolute value of negative 7. What is the distance negative 7 is from 0? There's 7 spaces. And distance is always positive. Now that I evaluated that, the bars disappear. Now we have two numbers that we dealt with before. 9 plus 7 is 16. And that is the solution. On this slide, we're also going to evaluate the expression. The problem is C. I have the absolute value of negative 4 minus the absolute value of 3. All right, in our first number, negative 4, what's the distance away from 0? It is 4 spaces, and distance is always positive. The subtraction sign is outside both of the absolute values, so it stays as a subtraction. Then let's evaluate the absolute value of 3. What is the distance 3 is away from 0? It is 3 spaces, and distance is always positive. 
Now we can do the subtraction problem. 4 minus 3 is 1, and that is the answer evaluated. Our next problem says evaluate the absolute value of x minus 3. Then it gives us x is equal to negative 5. So this is where we're going to substitute. So I'm keeping my absolute value bars. My x will be substituted with a negative 5 minus 3. All right, so let's evaluate. First thing I must do, kind of like parentheses, is the absolute value bars. In fact, treat them the same. So do everything inside the parentheses first are the absolute value bars. So let's evaluate negative 5. The distance is 5 spaces. Distance is always positive. Once I evaluate that, the absolute value bars disappear. The negative sign, or subtraction sign, is on the outside, so it stays the same. And 3 does not have any absolute value bars, so we don't need to evaluate that or change that. It stays 3. Now we have 5 minus 3. That is 2.